is if you are not super, super internet savvy, but you love books and you Google bookstores, what happens is you get run over by ads and junk. But if you can go to this, it's this very thorough, easy to navigate. These are actually bookstores that you can go to instead of somebody's Etsy page or their eBay page or things that are not real bookstores for people who just want to go to a bookstore. And I think it's just nice to have it all in one place and it's mapped out and there's lists and you can kind of plot a whole day around going to this town to see this store. And it just gives a nice cohesiveness and just this really fun guide to basically plan a year. Like you could go all over the state and not hit all the bookstores. Like there's just, but if you don't have somebody that's a neutral party telling you that, how would you ever know? If you just went by who had the money to buy an ad, you wouldn't know. So I was really excited about it. I just thought it gave voice to everybody who might not have an advertising budget or even the savvy to get their bookstores out there. A lot of people, you know, are not internet whizzes, can't pay for a marketing team. And this does a beautiful job with no other goal other than to make people read. That's awesome. Wise, I mean, we're in coastal North Carolina. We're on Topsail Island. And, you know, it, <laughs> there's a very a broad history of the area. I mean, we have, you know, pirates and, you know, uh, the Native American population, you know, that's lived here and like secret military installations and projects that, you know, develop the jet engine and goats, you know, and goat island and, Blueberry you know, farms. And, and ghost stories and all these kinds of things that have, you know, influenced, uh, you know, great books you know, about the area, you know, from fiction to nonfiction, history, you know, cookbooks, I mean, you name it, you know, there's lots of stuff, you know, and that's kind of, you know, that sort of things influence the, the story of, you know, our place too. It's probably the most disorganized bookstore yes, um, because we, we, the, the game was, we all loved books so much. And so instead of trying to buy everything that came on the market, Everybody kind of focused like this was our love. My love was cookbooks and kids books. Um, my mom had real specific tastes. And so we'd kind of gravitate towards that so that when people came and wanted something new to read, we could give you a real answer, you know, like, and, and so you just, and, and it was funny how these groups of people and friends kind of evolved from, you know, like he has very specific, sometimes embarrassing taste. And book, you know, Star Trek, things like this. But, you know, I, I, so, you I know, like science fiction. I like everything. So, but in the, the same thing, you know, you'd have something you like, and then they'd tell you about somebody you'd never heard of. And so it just, it kind of grew. Um, and we kept getting donations of books while we had to be closed. So, like, I'll send you pictures of upstairs when we get off. <laughs> it looks like hoardersbookstore.com. Like, it's just walls of everything um so I, yeah it's very disorganized nothing's online but we can really tell you where anything is in the store if you come and ask us. like you know we can find it but um but you know it's the kind of place you go in where it's almost scientific it's the uncertainty principle <laughs> you know anything could be in here <laughs> and sometimes it is but um it's lots of cookbooks uh food writing a lot of rare books um a lot of sci-fi tons of kids picture books like vintage ones that i just yeah, lots of kids love kids books. um and then we have it themed by section you know there's a travel section um there's a romance section there's and then we kind of you know fill it in with all the um matching accoutrements we don't really have anything i don't know if we have the gifty stuff it's locally made you know what i mean instead of having the so that's kind of what will fill out a thing like mystery came about because we had all these neat Agatha Christie's and then this lady dropped off these suitcases that her been her granddad's she'd never been able to unlock them and then when we were able to unlock them there's like three more suitcases and a journal unless like so we just have all this stuff and everything has a story and it just seemed to kind of work with the books and they kind of so it kind of has a life of its own we don't have and a lot of control she, she's so good about you know displays and, and making things look super cool I mean, like, you know, things like the old boat, you know, from the from the, uh, you know, the it's, yard sale. It's more that, a desperate show that, that, that showed up full of books. That is how it started. Also from the yard that, sale that, that we a, made into shelves for books. That's a fair statement. That's how the bookstore got started. I went to a yard sale and I saw this boat and then there were 30 boxes of books 
this was years ago and it, it was, was a movie prop boat and it, but it was somebody's storage unit and i was like how much for the boat and he jokingly said fifty dollars if you'll take that and all the books but you have to take it all at once and it was like 6 30 in the morning and they were all still asleep and i was like huh so by the time they got up and got home i had a boat in the front yard and all these cases of books everywhere and that um that's how it started but that was probably 10 years ago mm -hmm. yeah. sorry um my aunts worked at this place in florida called ives and it had they'd taken a bunk bed and painted it and then made branches and that was the kids section was this tree bunk bed thing and so i would get whatever book they picked for me like the first book i read there was patchwork cat that's probably 19 1981 and i was little and sitting in there with that book smell and all these books in this little dark room by myself and it was just it was the best it was it's it set up a life of um, book hoarding for sure and i remember honestly I, the the first time i remember going somewhere for books was the library you know because we kind of grew up in the country and you know and, and oh to be able to just go and and the smell of the books and and all the different covers and being able to just you know go off in your own corner and read your own store. thing and, you know but then bookstore wise my dad worked um at a college bookstore so when i was younger i could go and you know just look at everything and sit down and read and you know do everything and like you know i was a little bit older then but uh but yeah it's just you know bookstores have always been just that place to escape it's a tie between Dodie Smith or Diana Wynn Jones. It's, it's it's neck and neck. I don't know. It depends on my mood. <laughs> it really does. I mean, it's just like it depends on what you're in the mood to read versus. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you pick? Oh, I the, I mean, the first person that pops in my mind would be Mark Twain just because, I mean, imagine the conversation. 